Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional, and I hope you have your coffee and your Bibles with you. We're going to be talking about a verse in Galatians that's a follow-up to uh, something that I talked about on Sunday morning. Um, but before we do that, let's uh, have a word of prayer together. Father, we thank you for your love for us, and we thank you for the day that you've given to us. I pray that you would give us your joy and your peace and your kindness and your love and your goodness all these fruits of having the Holy Spirit in our lives. We ask you to touch us and to, to uh, draw us more fully into the life of Christ this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, just by the way, by the word of announcements, you know that our governor has announced that uh, on uh, the 20th, <clears throat> the 20th of this month, we will be uh, able to open up as a house of worship. We don't have... Uh, details on that. I've been trying to look for more details of what that means, what's, uh, what capacity um, we will be able to open at, um, and we're going to have to do some, some thinking about masks and some thinking about distancing and thinking about how the sanctuary is going to look when we come in. I'm sure at first when we start to do this, it, it may feel strange um, but once again, through all this, uh, through all this process, I think we got, we need to remember that we're doing all of this because we love each other and, uh, because, because we love our community. And so we will, we will continue to listen to what they say in, in terms of what the bishop sends out. <clears throat> I think Cooksey mentioned that the bishop has a team that is kind of talking about what, uh, re, uh, you know, transitioning back to being open as a church again. Uh, what that looks like, and so we'll listen to attentively to uh, what they say about how to do that. Um, we will have to remember too about, uh, and I guess uh, there's a lot of questions about how we're going to do this. Um, if there's a capacity, a number that they give to us, uh, we may have to do some RSVP kind of things. Um, I would hate to see people get ready for church and then come in on Sunday morning and and people at the door saying, well, we were at capacity. I, I, I don't want that to happen. So we may have to have a system of, of calling into the church or emailing or texting um, uh, which service you want to be in, that kind of thing. So all of those things are parts of, of what we're thinking about uh, as we talk about reopening and what that is going to look like. So continue praying for us. Uh, we we want to we want to navigate this in such a way that we would be able to take full full advantage of the time that we can come back together and, and rejoice in that. And so um, we'll be thinking about that in, in the days to come. And I'll give you information as I as I get it. So I wanted to go to the book of Galatians uh, in chapter two, if you have your Bibles with you. Um, one of my favorite verses. This is a memory verse. I, I started memorizing scripture when I was about uh, 18 or 19 years old, <clears throat> and, and it became an important thing to me to memorize, to get the scripture here, uh, I felt like if I could if I get it here in my memory, then it would be, have a better chance of getting here. And, and David, King David says in one of his Psalms, he says, thy word have I hid in, your, in my heart that I would not sin against you. And so I, I just felt like that's the best place to get the word of God is in our hearts. And so I uh, started memorizing some of these things. Uh, Galatians chapter 20, uh, or chapter 2, verse 20, uh, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for me. Um, and then he goes on to say, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Um, but I want to I talk about this in terms of what I said Sunday about this phasing into uh, life. Uh, Jesus says, I am the life, and we talked about how, how do you phase into that. Um, there are steps to be taken. Uh, if, if we are going to ever enter into life, uh, Jesus' coming is key. When he came and was uh, crucified and when he was buried and resurrected, <clears throat> that, that was a key to us coming into life. He did, in other words, he came, he came to give us life. And so he did, and, and what he did in the, in the Christ event, in the, his death, burial, and resurrection, he gives us a, a way to share that life with him. And so the first step is, is crucifixion. 
and I'll be talking in the next couple of mornings, I'll be talking about death, burial, and resurrection, and our connection to uh, death, Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, because we are not just observers, we are participants. Um, when Jesus says, come follow me, early in the Gospels, uh, it changes after, when he starts talking about his death, it changes, his call changes from come follow me to take up your cross and come follow me. And, and so there's a transition that call, calls us into a deeper walk with Jesus. And, and I say deeper, when I talk about these things, uh, these are kind of deep, these are deep issues. And, and it was, and I realized that as I, I'm, I'm preaching on Sunday morning on this, um, these are complicated issues. And a lot of times when you get into these deeper issues, uh, we just kind of tend to get in, we get lost in the wording. You know, we, we just, um, we hear the words and, and it becomes a drone, you know. But I, my, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit comes with my wording to, un, to help us to understand how to uh, be connected to Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, Paul speaks in Galatians and he, sa he, says, he, he says, it's a fact, I have been crucified with Christ. And by the way, the reason we are to be crucified with Christ is because we want to get rid of uh, what Paul calls in Romans and other books, called the old man or the flesh, the, the old part of us, the old way that we lived. Um, I imagine most of us can look back in our lives and we can, uh, we can think about times and seasons and even recent uh, occurrences where we do things we, we are ashamed of. We, we just wish we wouldn't do those things. And that's the old man, the old flesh, the old woman in, old wo woman in us, uh, the old uh, uh, body of death that is in us. And Paul says there's a, there's a new man a new woman and an old man and an old woman that you know he says that, that we are to to resist the, the tendency of the flesh and to try to walk in the newness of the spirit and so part of that is crucifying the old person that lives in us those old tendencies uh, that, that try to drag us back into into sinful living um, and and there are two aspects of our connection with Christ and his death uh, that are important to us. There's um, very, I guess, a theological uh, words for it are imparted and imputed. Imparted and imputed. Um, when I, when I, uh, when Paul says it's a finished fact that I have been crucified with Christ, that's that's God's imputing that fact into us. As soon as we say yes to Jesus and ask Him into our hearts, it is imputed to us that we are, in other words, it's reckoned to us that we are in Christ. God, it, it just as a thing that God does, he puts us in Christ. That's a finished, factual reality. That's called imputation. Um, but there's another aspect of our connection to Christ and his death that is called an impartation, an imparted, that, that not only is it a fact, a theological fact that we are crucified with Christ, it's also something that we walk in. It's something that we experience. It's something that we are, we are called uh, deeper and deeper into. So it's actually, it's, it's actually a done deal. It's happened, but it's also happening on a daily basis. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. But Jesus also, in, in, in connection to his death, he said, uh, you have to take up your cross daily and follow me. And so there's, there's a factual aspect that we have been crucified with Christ, but there's also a daily walking in that um, when you're when you're tempted to sin or you're you're tempted to do that thing that you've always done and you can't quit doing there's a fact that you have been crucified with Christ and that you're dead to that sin and that sin has no power over you because you're dead and that's the point of Romans chapter 7 you can study that sometimes uh, if you have uh, if you have a dead person sin is not going to there's no, you can't, you can't tempt a corpse, that kind of thing. And that's kind of the point that uh, if, when you're tempted, you realize, okay, I'm dead to this thing, to this sin. It has no appeal to me because I'm dead to it. And so that's a fact theologically, but also in your day to day living, there's that wrestling that says, uh, I know it's a fact that I'm dead with Christ, but I really feel like I want to do this thing. I'm really, I, I'm feeling drawn into it. I, I feel very alive when it comes to this, con this connection to this sin. 
And that, that point, the question becomes, who will you connect to? Will you connect to the sin or will you connect to the fact, the theological fact, that you have been crucified with Christ? And so um, our walk with Jesus day to day consists of this understanding, and I know I'm, I'm getting maybe drawn down into words here, but this understanding that we have been crucified with Christ, and then Paul used, and, and this is, you find this in the book of, Revelation, or book of Romans and Galatians, that, that since it has happened, since God has said it's done, it's finished, and you're dead in Christ, reckon yourself so. In other words, since it is true, then you need to walk in it. You need to act like it. You need to act like it is true. Um, if I've got $7,000 in the bank and I'm hungry and I, I, I'm just dying of hunger and I have no, uh, I just can't get anything to eat. I can't find any food that's free or anything like that. And so I've got $7,000 in the bank. God says, you've got seven, my bank account says there's $7,000 there. And yet I don't live it out. I don't act like I've got $7,000. I don't reckon it so. Um, I can literally starve to death with $7,000 in the bank. So it's a fact that I've been crucified with Christ. It's a fact that I have deliverance over sin. I, it's a fact that sin has no power over me. That's a theological fact. But if I don't live it out and walk in it, in faith, believing God, what God has said is done, it is done, then I can actually uh, live a defeated life as a Christian because I'm walking in the flesh that is that is, has no power over me. Um, I just wanted to bring that out to you this morning. Um, I think as you meditate on these things, they have powerful impact. They have a powerful impact on the way that we live day to day, that we are crucified with Christ and that we live uh, because he lives. And so um, I ask you to meditate on those things, pray about those things. And, and again, as, as the days. uh uh, approach when we can be back together again. I'm glad to talk to you on the phone. I, I, I'd love to talk to you about these things and how these work, how these things work in our lives. I think they're very important to us. So uh, tomorrow we'll talk about, uh, talk more about um, what it means to be crucified, uh, buried, and then resurrected with Christ. But for now, let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us. We ask your grace to be upon us. We ask your ministry to be upon us. And specifically when we talk about this word that Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. As we, as we embrace that truth and walk in that truth, may it give us victory over sins that have once held us captive. I pray this for all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you tomorrow and, uh, and hopefully face-to-face -face very soon.